Hello, everyone. My name is Henry Cervantes, Program Manager for the Peace Exchange, a program of Holy Family Ministries. We're very happy to join you today as we explore peace education. As part of the Peace Exchange program, we've developed a peace education program called Speaking Peace. We've been able to take our Speaking Peace program to thousands of young children across Chicago neighborhoods. And we're very happy to join you today. And hello everyone, my name is Shana Jones. I am the program assistant to the Peace Exchange. I'm so glad that you all are tuning in. Today we have a really cool lesson we're going to teach and it's called Nonviolent Communication. Before we get started, please take out a piece of paper and a pencil because we're getting ready to teach nonviolent communication. Can you repeat after me and say nonviolent communication? Awesome. Thank you, Shana. So as part of the Speaking Peace program, we believe that peace is possible. We just have to be able to learn the skills and the tools to make that so. In the Speaking Peace program, we are gonna learn about nonviolent communication. And as a part of this lesson, you're gonna learn the four steps that you need to practice peace in your community. You also have a chance to see how we use the tool uh, and, and hopefully inspire you to practice to do the same. So we're, we're gonna learn the steps. You're gonna have a chance to see how the tool is used in real life situations so that you can continue to practice peace in your communities. Awesome, so as Henry stated, we are going to now teach you all the nonviolent communication process or NVC for short. This is actually a lesson that we learned during our trip in India. So I think it's so cool. Make sure you all are prepared with your pencil and paper because we're getting ready to start. So what you're gonna do is first label your paper one through four. So follow along as Henry is writing on the board. One through four, leave enough space and make sure your paper is the long way so you'll have enough space for our drawing. Great, so let's get started. We're going to start off with step one. So for step one, please draw a circle for a head. You can follow along with what Mr. Henry is doing on the board. Draw a circle for a head and within the head, draw eyes. And from the eyes, you're going to write the step, observe. So now on your paper, you should have a circle with eyes and this first step, observe. This first step is so important because in a conflict, we have to make sure we state exactly what we see and don't guess or add your own opinions. So I want you to repeat something after me. Say this with me. You can't argue facts, but you can argue opinions. And you might say, what do I mean by that? So let's use this example. Let's say I am on the grammar school basketball team. And so for my first game, I do pretty well. I'm a, I'm a pretty good player on the team. But for my second game, I was not feeling the best, so I didn't score any points during that game. So there are two students that come up to me after the game. And I want you all to listen because I want you all to identify which student would I be more angry with. So the first student comes up to me after the game and he says, hey, Shayna, I noticed you didn't score any points. Okay. The second student comes up to me and they say, hey, Shayna, I think you're a sucky player. Which student do you think I would be angrier with? Absolutely, I would be angrier with student two because he came to me with his opinion, not the facts. Whereas student one came to me and stated the facts and let me know, hey, I noticed you didn't score any points. I can't get mad at that because it's the truth. So again, just remember, don't state your opinion, but state the facts because facts don't add to conflict. Opinions do add to conflict. So if you want to stay in a nice peaceful but I would suggest that you only state the facts and exactly what you see. Do not guess or state your opinions because that could make the situation worse. So for step two, I would like for you to draw a heart, just like Ms. Shayna is doing. The heart represents feelings. So next to the heart, I want you to write the word feelings. In a conflict, feelings tend to come up. Now raise your hand if you've ever been in a conflict with somebody. I know I have. Have you ever been angry with somebody, upset, right? In a conflict, a lot of feelings do come up. And as peacemakers, we have to be very careful 
of how we express those feelings. So step two is very important. You have to be able to really acknowledge how you feel and communicate how you feel. Because when somebody is not skilled in handling their feelings, that's when violence happens. So for us, pay attention to how you feel and how you are communicating how you feel with others. As you can see on the board, we have feelings I feel. And this is how you use step two. You communicate how you feel. In a conflict, it is okay to be upset. It is okay to be angry. What is not okay is to hurt others. So how can we use our words to communicate our feelings? And you have the power to do that. If you are upset, if you are angry, it is okay to communicate that. So again, step one was observe, I see. Step two, feelings, I feel. And step three, we're going to discuss our needs. What do you need to feel better in a situation? So in a conflict, we're always going to have feelings about how we feel about things, but we have to be able to realize what do we need in order to feel better? I also like to say this too, our feelings directly connect to our needs. If we don't have our needs met, our feelings can be negatively affected. For example, has anyone ever heard of the term hangry? Right, hangry is literally being hungry and angry at the same time. Well, sometimes I have a bad case of being hangry. And I notice that if I go throughout the day without eating, again, not fulfilling the need of bringing food to my belly, I notice that I can become angry, changing my feelings from happy to mad. So I think it's so important to be able to identify what do you need to feel better? In that case, I just need food to feel better and I notice that I become a much happier person. So for step three, remember to identify your needs. What do you need to feel better in a situation so that your feelings and everything else can continue to flow and be in a happy, positive spot? So continuing on with our steps, in a conflict, we need something. And just like Ms. Shana said, we have to communicate what we need in a situation. So step three connects with our next step, which is step four. Now for step four, I want you to draw some legs just like Ms. Shana is doing on the whiteboard. And for legs, I want you to write the word request. So now that you've figured out in a situation what you see, what you feel, and what you need, the next part is how do you ask for what you need? How do you ask for that? And that is in the form of a request. So. Step four is, you, this is where we get really into our skills because you have to be able to request things in a nice way. In a conflict, let's say we're upset, we're furious, we're angry, and sometimes we don't know how to ask for things nicely. And this is where we really have to be very skillful. So for requests, remember, how do I ask for what I need in a nice way? I know when somebody talks to me, I like to be spoken to with respect, right? Because it makes a big difference. So again, in nonviolent communication, these are the four steps that you can follow to problem solve, to peacefully resolve a conflict. So just to go over the four steps, step one, observe. Talk about what you see in a conflict. Step two, feelings. Figure out how you feel and communicate your feelings. Step three, needs. What do you need in that situation? Talk about what you need. And step four, request. How do you kindly and respectfully ask for what you need? And if you use these steps, you're using the skills to make peace possible. What you see, what you feel, what you need, and what you ask for. And I know this might be difficult, especially in a conflict or in a problem where we might be upset with our friends or our brother or our sister. I guarantee you that if you use these steps, you'd be a better peacemaker. 
Great, so this is my favorite part of the lesson where we actually get to act out skits based off real life scenarios and conflicts. So basically, we're going to model how to use the four step process of nonviolent communication to solve conflict. So in this first scene, you're going to see Henry have a marker and I'm going to snatch the marker away from Henry. And what he's going to then have to do is talk to me using the four steps to help solve the conflict. Now what I need you all to do is say action with me to start the scene. And action. Man, I need something to write with. Uh, give me this. Shayna, can I talk to you for a second? Uh, sure. Hey, I mind. saw you just snatch the marker from my hands. That's mine. I feel really upset right now. I'm angry. Why do you have to snatch it from me like that? I need that. With all this e-learning stuff, I need my materials. That's my marker. I got to do a project. That's mine. I need it. Can I please get it back? If you need something, just let me know. Just don't snatch it. I feel so disrespected right now. So can I please get it back? You know what? Sure, Henry. I apologize for snatching it in the first place. And I do understand this e-learning is definitely a lot. So I apologize. Will you forgive me? Sure. That's fine. So let's do a quick recap of what we just saw. Henry said he saw me snatch the marker from him. He then said he felt very disrespected and also hurt. He talked about what he needed, which was me to give him his marker back. And then he politely asked for his marker back. And I was so happy to give him his marker back after apologizing. Now we're gonna do another skit. Now because of the new normal with us having to wear face masks. This next skit, we're gonna demonstrate how I don't wanna bother wearing a mask. And so we're gonna have a conflict. And so Ms. Shayna and I are gonna demonstrate how we could use nonviolent communication in this new normal. Man, this is silly. Why do I gotta wear this mask? Oh, it's so hot. <sighs> Henry, can I talk to you for a second? Hey, what's up? So I see that you don't want to wear your mask. But I feel it's hot. It's silly. I know, but I feel very uneasy and scared because your germs can spread without a mask. I need to feel safe in my learning environment, and so does all of the rest of our classmates. So I really ask that you put your mask back on so we can all be safe in our learning environment. Oh, I'm sorry, Shayna. I didn't know I was making you feel worried or scared. I'm sorry. I just, I just didn't want to wear it because, you know, it gets hot around your face and. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'll put it back on. I'm sorry. I, you know, I just realized how important this is to make everybody feel safe. It's not just about me. It's about all of us. Awesome. I'm sorry. No all right, I'll, I'll wear it, all right? So as you can see, we just demonstrated another role play um, so you can see how we can use nonviolent communication during this new normal. In the skit, you saw that I didn't want to put on the mask, and Shayna did a great job in communicating exactly what she saw, how she felt. She felt scared, she felt worried. She communicated her need to feel safe, and she kindly requested for me to put on my mask. And it's important for us during these times to communicate how we feel and what we need. And as you can tell, I put my face, my, my face mask back on. So thank you again for joining us for this speaking piece lesson. Uh, and remember, these are tools that you can use during this new normal. In this lesson, you saw us go through the steps and you saw us do two role plays and how to use these steps to make peace. In speaking peace, we believe that peace is a practice. It's something that you do. Peace is a skill. So thanks again for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. I've had a great time being with you all and teaching you all this cool lesson. And I really want to add on to Henry and say, yes, practice, practice, practice. Again, you won't become an expert of nonviolent communication overnight, but as long as you practice on your friends and families and the people around you, I'm sure you're gonna become great at it. 
Thank you so much for joining us. And again, please be safe.